Wednesday, 25th. In the p.m. had a fresh breeze at northwest until three o'clock, at which time it came to west, and we tacked and stood to the northward. At five o'clock, being about five or six leagues from the land, the pigeon house bearing west-south-west, distant nine leagues, sounded and had eighty-six fathoms. At eight, being very squally with lightning, we close reefed the topsails and brought two, being then in one hundred and twenty fathoms. At three a.m., made sail again to the northward, having the advantage of a fresh gale at south-west. At noon, we were about three or four leagues from the land, and in the latitude of thirty-four degrees twenty-two minutes, and longitude two zero eight degrees thirty-six minutes west. Course and distance sailed since yesterday noon is north by east forty-nine miles. In the course of this day's run, we saw the smoke of fire in several places near the sea beach. About two leagues to the northward of Cape St. George, the shore seems to form a bay, which appeared to be sheltered from the north-east winds. But as we had the wind, it was not in my power to look into it, and the appearance was not favourable enough to induce me to lose time in beating up to it. The north point of this bay, on account of its figure, I named Long Nose. Latitude, 34 degrees, 4 minutes south. Eight leagues to the northward of this is a point which I called Red Point. Some part of the land about it appeared of that colour. A little way inland to the northwest of this point is a round hill, the top of which looked like the crown of a hat. Thursday, 26th. Clear, serene weather. In the p.m. had a light breeze at north-northwest until five, at which time it fell calm, we being then about three or four leagues from the land and in forty-eight fathoms. Variation by azimuth, eight degrees forty-eight minutes east. The extremes of the land, from northeast by north, to southwest by south. Saw several smokes along shore before dark, and two or three times a fire. In the night we lay becalmed, driving in before the sea, until one o'clock a.m., at which time we got a breeze from the land, with which we steered northeast, being then in thirty-eight fathoms water. At noon it fell little wind, and veered to northeast by north, we being then in the latitude of thirty-four degrees ten minutes, and longitude two zero eight degrees twenty-seven minutes west, and about five leagues from the land, which extended from south thirty-seven degrees west to north half east. In this latitude are some white cliffs, which rise perpendicular from the sea to a moderate height, Friday, 27th. Variable light airs between the north-east and north-west. Clear, pleasant weather. In the p.m., stood off shore until two, then tacked and stood in till six, at which time we tacked and stood off, being then in fifty-four fathoms, and about four or five miles from the land, the extremes of which bore from south twenty-eight degrees west to north 25 degrees 30 minutes east. At 12, we tacked and stood in until 4 a.m., then made a trip off until daylight, after which we stood in for the land. In all this time we lost ground, owing a good deal to the variableness of the winds, for at noon we were by observation in the latitude of 34 degrees 21 minutes south. Red Point bearing south 27 degrees west, distant three leagues. In this situation, we were about four or five miles from the land, which extended from south 19 degrees 30 minutes west to north 29 degrees east. 
Saturday, 28th. In the p.m., hoisted out the pinnace and yawl in order to attempt a landing. But the pinnace took in the water so fast that she was obliged to be hoisted in again to stop her leaks. At this time, we saw several people ashore, four or five of whom were carrying a small boat or canoe, which we imagined they were going to put into the water in order to come off to us, but in this we were mistaken. Being now not above two miles from the shore, Mr. Banks, Dr. Solander, Tupia and myself put off in the yawl and pulled in for the land to a place where we saw four or five of the natives who took to the woods as we approached the shore which disappointed us in the expectation we had of getting a near view of them, if not to speak to them. But our disappointment was heightened when we found that we nowhere could effect a landing by reason of the great surf which beat everywhere upon the shore. We saw, hauled up upon the beach, three or four small canoes, which to us appeared not much unlike the small ones of New Zealand. In the wood were several trees of the palm kind, and no underwood. And this was all we were able to observe from the boat, after which we returned to the ship about five in the evening. At this time it fell calm, and we were not above a mile and a half from the shore in eleven fathoms, and within some breakers that lay to the southward of us. But luckily... A light breeze came off from the land, which carried us out of danger, and with which we stood to the northward. At daylight in the morning we discovered a bay which appeared to be tolerably well sheltered from all winds into which I resolved to go with the ship and with this view sent the master in the pinnace to sound the entrance while we kept turning up with the ship having the wind right out. At noon the entrance bore north-northwest distance one mile. Sunday, 29th. In the p.m., wind southerly and clear weather, with which we stood into the bay and anchored under the south shore, about two miles within the entrance, in five fathoms, the south point bearing south-east and the north point east. Saw as we came in, on both points of the bay, several of the natives and a few huts, men, women and children on the south shore abreast of the ship, to which place I went in the boats in hopes of speaking with them, accompanied by Mr. Banks, Dr. Solander and Tupia.